This video is sponsored by Manscaped. All right, I'm finally feeling some Red Wings talk. How about we get into it right here? In today's video, I wanted to explore just some stuff that has happened around the league over the past 24 hours and kind of dive deeper into the origins of these parts. Because when it comes to this YouTube channel, sometimes we like to do this, where we take a look at some things that happened in the past and revisit them with hindsight, revisit them with education as to how things have gone on afterwards. And you know what? It's a great exercise when talking about evaluating talent and evaluating ideas on trades and moves and acquisitions and all that stuff. So join me in today's video as we go over what happened a few years ago when the Detroit Red Wings made a very significant one-for-one -one trade in acquiring Robbie Fabry. A guy who, in yesterday's Detroit Red Wings action against the Dallas Stars, scored a natural hat trick to put the Red Wings out on top and ultimately defeat the Stars in a solid 3-2 win. And yes, you heard me right, natural hat trick. It's a sequence in the NHL where a player scores three goals uninterrupted, so there are no other goals scored by the guy's team that go on in between the hat trick, nor are there any opponent goals that go on in between the hat trick. Fabry scored a goal in the first period, in the second period, and in the third period, all in a row, and as a result, he's now got nine goals on the season. He is the leading Detroit Red Wings goal guy. And a lot of these goals were pretty nice ones too. Two of them were just absolutely ballistic snipes on the rush, going in there, absolutely wristing it by the Dallas Stars goaltender. One of them was in the high slot, the other one was far out onto the side. And then the third goal was a very nice setup from none other than Dylan Larkin, who has the puck in tight. He tries to get it by a sprawled out Dallas Stars Jake Ottinger, but nah, it doesn't go through, so he passes it out in front to Fabry, who toe drags it into an open goal. Afterwards, the Dallas Stars score two, and that was all she wrote. The Red Wings come away with a 3-2 victory over the Dallas Stars. However, the shots on goal, 40-21 to for the Dallas Stars. So, like we have seen all season, it is Jonathan Bernier doing such an extraordinary job in net. Unfortunately, he was taken out. We will see how exactly he is evaluated as things go on, but... Thomas Grice went in there and he kept the game in hand. It's actually kind of funny because with the way the NHL's scoring system goes down, I don't actually think this one counts as a Jonathan Bernier win because if I'm wrong, then please let me know in the comments. I believe it goes the goaltender that is on the ice when the game-winning goal is scored is the goaltender that is awarded with the win, and that happened to have been Thomas Grice because Robbie Fabry's game-winning goal came at 9 minutes into third period when Grice was in net. It's kind of funny how that works. Jonathan Bernier gets... 17 shots against, he stops them all, he gets taken out via injury, and then the game, which is eventually won by Detroit, is a Thomas Grice victory on paper, even though he let in two goals in the third period. That's kind of funny how that works, but you know what? It might be wrong, that's just my own assumption of it. Again, it might not be actually right. Who knows if Jonathan Bernier will get the win here, but eventually he was taken out, so we'll see how he is able to come back. But before we get over into the Robbie Fabry trade, which I do want to explore, I'd love to give a big shout out to Man. Manscaped, today's sponsor for this video here. Support for this YouTube channel is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels and is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. Now, we've collaborated on this because there's some big news in town. Manscaped has just officially launched in Canada. If you're located in the Great White North, you may be one of the first Canadians to experience these life-changing products. You ever have those times? Sometimes it's just a little too much down there, and you need to clean things up. Manscaped is the answer for you with their third-generation redesigned electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. Cutting-edge ceramic blades, a 90-minute battery, LED lights, and it's waterproof, along with a 7,000 RPM motor and a charging stand. The Manscaped team has created the greatest below-the-belt hair trimmer. So go ahead, trim that junk of yours. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code LEGOROCKS99 at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off and free shipping with code LEGOROCKS99. Do yourself a favor and check out Manscaped. 
Robbie Fabry on the Detroit Red Wings is quite literally the top goal scorer on this squad, but he wasn't always like this. The guy was drafted in 2014, he is currently 25 years old, he had some really good years with the St. Louis Blues, immediately stepping out of the OHL in 2015-16, for example, but... Fabry was put in a very unfortunate situation growing up throughout the NHL. A few knee injuries here and there, and a few other prospects coming into the system overtaking his name on the depth chart. Put Robbie Fabry in a position where, in 2019, even though his St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup, things were getting real antsy for a guy who was getting played in the middle, bottom six of the Blues, and who wasn't really just being used in general. Which is why, Partway through the 2019-20 NHL season, the St. Louis Blues traded Robbie Fabry after there were leaks of a trade request coming about to the Detroit Red Wings in exchange for Jacob Delarose. Now, Delarose has always been an interesting name for me because, as a guy who is a Habs fan as well, it was always really interesting taking a look at the prospects and the young guys in the Montreal system, and Delarose was always one of those. Now, a lot of the intrigue with Delarose and the Montreal Canadiens comes with the fact that his last name is literally... Della Rose, which is kind of French, but Della Rose wasn't really all too great with the Montreal Canadiens. Sure, he was really good at backchecking. That was like one of his main bread and butter aspects of his game, but he spent some time up and down with the Canadiens, with the St. John's Ice Caps. He was pretty all right there. But when he was sent down onto waivers a few years ago, the Red Wings went out there and they gave a claim. He went over to Detroit, played 60 games in 2018-19, and he had 9 points. Not exactly incredibly great, but you know what, the Red Wings were kind of bad that year. Their top point guys actually did really well. Larkin, Athanasiu, Nyquist. Kind of funny reading the names off of this list and seeing the amount of goals coming out of it. Like, wow, Thomas Vanek had 16 goals. That's crazy good. But still. The Red Wings were one of the worst teams in the league that year. They drafted sixth overall. They got more at Sider. We all kind of know the story there. But Della Rose was just more of the bottom-ish six kind of guy that you saw with the Habs playing over here in the Red Wings organization. And as a result, when the St. Louis Blues were out there shopping Robbie Fabry and he was traded to Detroit, that Della Rose was the one piece that went back. And it was seen by a lot of people as a very interesting kind of reclamation project because Robbie Fabry had had NHL success, as we noted in the past 37 points, 2016, 72 games, he had 18 goals that year, that was pretty good. So this was just a guy that was falling down the depth chart in St. Louis, and he was in a position where he wanted another opportunity. So why not just trade him to the Red Wings, one of the worst teams in the league that could probably use a nice up and end top six caliber forward who is young because, hey, even though they do have some good players, Nyquist was shipped out. You have Athanasiu who was traded away later. You have Thomas Vanek and Franz Nielsen who are old. You have these guys that are probably not going to stick around for a while. So why not give Fabry a chance because he is in his mid 20s and, you know, that's exactly what he got in his first year in Detroit, man. He finished up that season with 31 points in 52 games with the Red Wings. He was a minus 29, but who cares? The Red Wings got themselves a very good player out of Robbie Fabry and Jacob De La Rose, even though he wasn't crazy good in terms of point production. He is still a guy that can slot into that bottom six with the Blues and actually provide a very nice defensive presence. This year, if you take a look at Jacob De La Rose, 1.9 games played, not really playing all too much, but, you know, he did get injured the other night, which is very unfortunate to see. He was taken out of the game against San Jose, I believe, so he's been sidelined ever since, I think. The timeline of recovery for him appears to be significant, which is really not great. Meanwhile, Robbie Fabry is out here with 15 points in 22 games played and 9 goals with the hat trick yesterday cementing that number up there. Which is great. You love to see Robbie Fabry come out here, actually defy all odds. His injuries have taken a step back. He is no longer that secondary guy on a team. He's actually being given a good role here in Detroit, and he's getting it done, which is awesome to see. So I know it's easy to take a look at the trade one for one and be like, oh, Jack of Rose right now. Look at the guy. He's only got one point. He's not playing all too much. Robbie Fabry is out here. He's getting a whole bunch of points. So it's easily a Detroit Red Wings win, right? Well, that's the thing. When you take a look at roles and the overall exposition of players and how they're used on a hockey team, distressed assets are a big deal. And by distressed assets, I mean assets that you have that you're playing or that are in your organization that are unhappy with the position that you're giving them. And that's apparently what Robbie Favre was. You had a guy who had apparently requested a trade looking for a change of scenery and to actually be given a chance because 
While he was taken out with injuries the entire time, you had Klim Kostan and a few other really good players, Robert Thomas, taking those top spots in the lineup as their top prospects, and you had other players filling in those roles. So, by the time Fabry came back, he wasn't really in a position to be used by the Blues in a way that they felt was successful because they had all this success with the top guys already, they didn't want to break that up. Which is understandable to a point, it's just, it put Fabry in an unfortunate position where he was stuck in that bottom six-ish role. So acquiring a guy in Della Rose, who in his limited time actually playing with the Blues, was a bottom six guy, and who kind of thrived in that kind of presence, is in itself a better fit for the Blues as a hockey team than a disgruntled Fabry would have been. Meanwhile, you have Fabry in Detroit getting all the solid opportunities in the world to go out there and actually just play his game, play on a team that is not really expected all too much out of his guys, and score a hat-trick once in a while, because of course, you can. It's really interesting though, just taking a look at the expended metrics on Fabry, this was tweeted out by Red Wings Rant Brothers of Discussion over here on Twitter, talking about how Robbie Fabry has 19 goals for when he's out there on the ice, not him per se, but like the team has 19 goals when Fabry is out there. 12 goals again, so he's a positive in that aspect. Although Fabry has an 8.6 expected goals for. Expected goals for is the amount of expected goals that you would mathematically expect a team to have when a player is out there on the ice based off of calculations on shots and where those shots are taken and how fast the shots are and who's taking the shots and all that stuff. Expected goals for is a very intricate stat that takes a look at all of that stuff and combines it into a metric that says, okay, when the player is out there, it's expected that the team would score this amount of goals. You can see how close it is to all the other numbers with St. Louis and Detroit beforehand. Look at 2015-16. The Blues with 36 goals for when Fabry is out there. Expected goals for number was 33. Next year, 25 goals for 21 expected goals for. It's usually around in the same ballpark. Even this year's goals against number. It's expected that the Red Wings would have given up about 11.4-ish goals when Fabry is out there. The real number is 12. But the goals for and expected goals for absolutely crazy. He's got 19 out there, even though the expected number says 8.6. That is absolutely incredible. Maybe I'm not watching too many Red Wings games, which I admittedly am not, but like that is absolute insanity how the discrepancy in the advanced analytics goes that way. The post over here on Twitter says that maybe the 26% shot percentage is a big catalyst as to why Fabry's on ice goal for number is a lot higher than expected goals for, but that's besides the point. Either way, he's out here breaking all expectations, getting goals, scoring points, and beating being just the best version of himself out there, the guy that the Red Wings traded for all those years ago, and that in itself is amazing to see. So taking a look back at the trade, even though it's quite dramatically a Red Wings win just based off of how good the other asset is, you'd rather see the Red Wings come out on top of trades than not, right? So talk to me in the comments what you thought about this video over here. Check out Manscaped. I hope you enjoyed this visage rose line. And bye. <laughs>